grace, we are going to round up this wonderful teaching on the church. The church. It's amazing um, how much we are, we are taught on Thursdays. You know, just keep all those pamphlets and make a library out of them and go over them. Be amazed how much, how much you, you don't really know how much you know until things happen in life and you see how others are so jittery and to you is a, is a no issue the only difference is knowledge it's just knowledge of God's word you know you just dismiss it what people are running, running up, up and down for that is when you know that you know and that knowledge gives us so much peace and so much liberty So 10 teachings have been taken on the church. If that way is cool, that's almost like a semester behind it, good it now. <laughs> the first teaching we saw that the, the, the Greek word which was translated into church is ecclesia, which means the called out ones, the called out ones. And that Jesus is the cornerstone and, uh, of the church. And we saw that we have the church universal, the church triumphant, the general assembly. The second teaching, we saw types of church, of the church administration. We saw the Presbyterian, Episcopal, Congregational, Independent, types of administration. All of these were given to us as, I'm just making a quick summary, as uh, pamphlets, and they are for free, so you can ask for them if you missed any. The, for the third teaching, we saw functions of the church, evangelism, fellowship, and service to humanity are the functions of the church, the basic functions of the church. The fourth teaching, we saw inter- Relations, relationships, the church to God, the church to church, the church to the world. The fifth teaching, we saw activities of the church and that spanned two teachings, five and six. The seventh, we saw church discipline, church discipline. The eighth, we saw benefits of the church or society and her members. And yesterday, we, not yesterday now, last Thursday, we saw membership responsibilities. Membership responsibilities. Interestingly, we had, yesterday was upper room prayer meeting of Royal Sisters, and it's always a, it's a short meeting, but very, very refreshing. And um, two sisters gave testimonies as per uh, how God restored them when they had challenges physically and materially. And along the line, one of them talked about, in fact, both of them mentioned the role of the church in their lives. Because you will need the church. Sometime you will need the church. So we're talking about membership responsibilities. And today we are looking at the last teaching small group fellowship small group fellowship looking at a human body i'm reading now it is evident that every single part while related to the big body and its well-being belongs to a smaller part which also is functional so the bigger part the smaller part is, is part of the bigger part even when you look at the, at, at the human body, 1 Corinthians 12 won't read all of that, but let's just see what we can pick out of that. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. So we are many smaller parts, but it's of one, one body. One finger in the body, while it works for the body, makes up a part of the hand. So also the nose that smells for the body makes up part of the face. 
when we mention the nose, we don't imagine the hand. And when we mention the finger, we don't imagine the face. So each smaller group appears independent, and yet it is not. From the things that we see, we understand the things of God, even up to the Godhead. Things we see around us. And so we, we, we understand that the smaller parts, they look independent. But they are not because they are parts of the whole. Let's look at uh, the same First Corinthians 12, but verse 26 now. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So we find that very easy to, to uh, identify with. If you've ever had a weak low before. A weak low. How about a toothache? How about... How about... <laughs> Our daughter, who is a, a dental surgeon, uh, they had a dental week of recent. And, and I don't know where she, where she got this, this thing from. Uh, I think it must have been posted along with the dental week. So somebody was trying to, they were trying to, you know, talk about toothache. And they, it was done in a very funny way. And somebody was asking, you know, you know all these apps that they used to make the face look funny. The person had a, a funny face, like a duck, but the human being, you know, I was now saying, teeth don't pain you before. Teeth don't pain you before. I say, teeth don't pain you before. You don't see pain before. Teeth don't pain you before. If teeth pain you before, ha, ha, <laughs> In fact, I think somebody said, I don't know whether somebody has said that whether it's, it's worse than labor pain. Don't know which one. You know? Kai. Just that I, I learned of somebody who, who by himself removed the tooth. Looked for something to remove the tooth. I think I heard it from my husband. Okay, okay. He said it's not the one. I can't Okay. By him, he just had to end that pain. He had to extract by himself. That was the level of pain. At that time, it looks as though the whole body is a tooth. But we know that it's just part of the bigger part of the, of the gum, the gum part of the mouth, the mouth part of the face. So it's not independent, though it may look like it. Ephesians 4.16 From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So we're all, the different smaller parts are knit together, are knit together. Colossians 2.19 and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. For the most effective well-being of the body of Christ, it is necessary and important for Christians to be faithful in smaller groups within the local assembly. That's just the point. Talking about the church, smaller groups. That for us to be more effective, for the body of Christ to be more effective, we all should be part of the smaller groups within the local assembly. For example, activity team, home cell, fellowship group, different ministries. Note that there is no useless member in the human body. There is no useless member, no useless member. Bible pattern, Bible pattern. Romans 15, 4, A. For whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Our emphasis is on A. For whatever things were written before, were written for our learning. So from what we, we see written, 
particularly in the Old Testament, for us to learn off in the New Testament. And even in the New Testament, for us to learn off, for us to live life with. So we have a pattern, we have a biblical pattern. Despite the fact that Jesus ministered in synagogues, he also ministered to smaller groups. To smaller groups. In Mark 1, 21, um, Luke there, he ministered in the synagogue. That was to a larger, uh, a larger group. Where more than 10 Jewish families gather together, they, they come together and they have a synagogue. And we are told that Jesus Christ ministered in the synagogue, but he also ministered to smaller groups. We show the importance of smaller groups. He, he, he came as a Jew, so he understood the importance of, of the synagogue, but all the same, he still ministered to smaller groups. Let's look at Matthew 8, 14 to 17. That was in the home of, of Peter. Now, when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her and she ministered and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Jesus Christ was ministering here in the house of Peter. He didn't say, no, all of you go to the synagogue. This is not a house matter. This is a synagogue matter. He ministered even in the house of, of Peter. He went to minister to one person, Peter's mother-in-law. And then also minister to other people in the house, smaller groups in the house. How, how big could Peter's house have been? There's no way it could, have been, it could have been the size of a synagogue. But Jesus Christ ministered there. Let us look at Luke 17 also. We are looking at the, the biblical pattern of smaller groups. Luke 17 from 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were le lepers, who stood afar off, and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Just ten people, just ten people, who, were, who called on Jesus, from, 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 from afar off. So they were not in, they were just, you can just imagine just out on the street. A small group of 10 people. He often shared intimate fellowship with his disciples. In Mark 6. There, let's look at Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. They met, the disciples came to Jesus Christ and they all had a time together. Look, we're talking about smaller groups, serving God in smaller groups. The church. Small group fellowship. Small group fellowship. Let's look at three the same mark now, 3, 14 to, 7, to 19. Then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out demons. So he had that fellowship. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, so he, he had these 12, 12 uh, uh, disciples that were with him. James, the son of Zebedee, or I would say 12 apostles that were with him. And John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is sons of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So Jesus Christ had fellowship with them. Just 12 of them, but he had fellowship with them. Let's look at Acts 
2.46. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their bread with gladness and simplicity of heart. So the, the early church had fellowship, smaller fellowships from house to house. In the early church, apart from worship meetings in the temple, they also met in homes. Smaller groups, they also met in homes. Acts 5.42 And daily in the temple and in every house, did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So these smaller groups, this is God's mind. And we're looking at that now as smaller group fellowships as we round up the teaching on the church. Let's look at Acts 27 to 10. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together, came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lambs in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in his window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued ministering, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, embracing him, and said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. What we want to see there is that Paul was preaching in a not too large a congregation. A Eutychus fell. Thank God that God's power raised him up. But it was a small congregation, a small gathering of people, a fellowship. Benefits. What are the benefits of small group fellowships? What are the benefits? Development. Development. It's easier to develop spiritually because you will not just be a number. Personal and adequate care is possible in smaller groups. Before I go on, uh, I just for forgot to do this. Please, uh, we've had some reports that um, during the during the week, you know, particularly when it's when, this is this is being shown online right now, and um, the camera is shows most of the parts of the church there by virtue of, of my being here as empty so it looks like an empty church so please um as many as would want to help us to change that picture can you please come and sit down here please please we will just wait for you you can who is on keyboard please play, play for them yes they, they understand it if you have left your home to come here you understand this thank you very much thank you the lord honor you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you for changing that picture of an empty church thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you and i we are the church not so aha so we are changing the image of an empty church thank you say me is this fan i will stay with i'm staying with the fan nothing will move me if church like let it be empty i will stay with this fan far away from everybody move 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 <laughs> let's clap for her let's clap for that <laughs> god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you can we clap for the church yes because you and i we are we are the church and we are changing that image of an our church is not an empty church we are here thank you very much so it shows uh so when we are in smaller groups we say one of the things we learn is development development first Corinthians thessalonians 2 7 to 8 but we were gentle among you just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children so affectionately longing for you we were well pleased to impact to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you had become dear to us. Smaller groups. Smaller groups. So when you get involved in smaller groups, you have personal 
attention, just like a mother nurturing her baby. A nephew in law of mine who just got into into uh, UI, you know, uh, I was I asked him. I said, "My dear, what church do you attend?" She said, "He said told me the church." I said, "When you go there next Sunday, join a team." He said, "But I'm just coming." I said, "The more reason why before your leg will touch ground, you should you should hold something. The more reason why you should go." There. And when you get there, boy, after service, wait wait behind and say you want to see the, see the pastor. Tell the pastor that your mommy said. I said, "I'm not your mommy." He said, "Yes, you are." I said, "Yeah." Huh? So your mommy said. You should tell the pastor who you are and that you would like to join a team. He called me the day after and said, I've, I've joined the media team of the church. I said, yes, because now, you, now your leg will stand because the pastor will look out. Who is, who is that little boy that came to me some days ago that was saying his father said, his mother said he should, you know. In fact, as I, was, as I was telling him that when you see the pastor, tell the pastor that your mother said, you know, he now looked, he looked at me funny. I said, am I not your mother? He said, yes, you are. He said, hey, I, I am I'm your mom now. He said, tell, you know, they say one person delivers, many people look after. Uh -huh. I said, we are the ones that cleaned your nose, that took after you, you are our, our son. Tell him that your mother said, you know, as I was saying that within me, I was laughing at, I'm sure the pastor would be wondering, who is this mother? Is she the first lady? Oh, who well. <laughs> you know just to give more attention more attention you and i can testify when we got involved in smaller groups how we began to develop more than just being lost in the crowd so it is not it is not the size of the church that is the issue but our involvement our involvement one can keep an eye on every member of a smaller family Learning is also easier. It's easier to learn in a smaller family. This is only 5.11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you, are, you also are doing. It's easier to edify one another in smaller groups. So we should be part of smaller groups in the church. Somebody joined the church not too long ago and she was doing something this weekend and I met somebody who said, oh, we were there. And I said, wonderful. Thank God that, that you went. And the only thing I can link up to that was that this woman joined the church not too long ago. But the moment she joined the church, she said she noticed that there was nobody interpreting in Yoruba church. And she went there and started interpreting to them. You know, she got involved right away. So let us get involved in smaller groups. And another benefit of smaller groups is establishment. Establishment. You are missed easily when you are absent. You are, you are therefore easily sought out and helped before it is too late. You are followed up until established in smaller groups. Of course, that also, that also means, you know, all of this thing is sowing and reaping. If you ask after others, they will ask after you too. You know? So in this smaller group's establishment, Hebrews 13, 9. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that they have to be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with it. For they have to be established by grace. Be established by grace. Luke 2, 40, 40. Let's see what is there. Okay, that was talking about Jesus Christ when he was uh, coming with the parents and they couldn't find him. And they now found him later on in the temple. The point there is that he was missed. His absence was conspicuous because they were a small family. And so they, they, they didn't find him. It was very easy to quickly start looking for him. The third benefit there is exercise 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 look i'm looking at benefits of smaller groups exercise within your group you can ex you can exercise by evangelizing by praying for the sick and generally demonstrating the bible in a friendly and informal and systematic way 
So we're able to exercise what we believe in that smaller group. You are a sweet psalmist. The sweet psalmist is even a large group. And so we have broken ourselves down into smaller groups in sweet psalmist. We have four families. We used to have four families in, in psalmist for A, B, C, D before. But now we've broken into A1, A2, B1, B2. So we are smaller still. We have a maximum of about 14 people in, 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 in a family now. So very easily people are, you know, are, are sought out when, when, when they are absent. It's very easy now to find them. And now exercising. Those who were hiding before, now they are called to lead prayers. Now they are, they are now made welfare officer. Now they have to go and see somebody who, who they have to go and check, check somebody. So exercising. When they get there, somebody is sick, they, are, they, are, they, will, they will pray for the sick now. So we are, we are all now exercising ourselves the more because we are in small, smaller groups. This ensures active personal participation. This ensures active personal participation. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. How is, it, how is it then, brethren? Whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Because now we are smaller groups. We have, we have our prayers. Uh, I, I, well, I, I, can, I can use the Swiss Army as an example because that is, that's the team to which I belong. So that is my own experience in, in my smaller group. We have our prayers, our online prayers every Saturday. 5 to 5.35 and people share the word for 5 minutes, others lead prayers for 10, 10 minutes and I mean last uh, almost every time but last, last uh, Saturday in particular I was so blessed I, you know until people open their mouths you don't know what is what is in that person I was so blessed if those, those 4 people were all pastors in Vine Branch I would be I would be proud of them. Now to know to know that they are simple sweet psalmists. You know, they brought out God's word powerfully in five minutes. It's not easy to share word in five minutes, so it's not easy to share word in five minutes. You know, uh, one of our, our older uh, people in Christian in, in I mean in the faith, you know, he was just make, was making fun somewhere. And saying that uh, he quotes Bible a lot. This person quotes Bible a lot, you know. And he said that some 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 other younger pastors wanted to copy him, which which is good. You want to copy your copy your your father, you know, which is good. And he said one of them, as he was trying to copy him, that he just with, with, within him, that he, that he was just saying colo 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 Colossians. Because it wasn't, it wasn't flowing. It's not easy to share one in five minutes. So one can stay on introduction. And say, as I was saying before, uh, say it, you have said it before. Tell us now, where are you going? In five minutes. So bring up introduction, body points, conclusion. Ah, I said, ah, we are blessed. I felt so proud of them. But that could only happen because of smaller groups. That they are being exercised, you know, to bring out for personal active participation. Ephesians 4.16 We've read this earlier on. Zechariah 12.8 In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David. Hallelujah. And the house of David shall be like God. Like the angel of the Lord before them. The, 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 the feeble one will be like a David. Because of growth, of establishment. And so in children's church, you know, where as the children are being exposed to God's word and in their smaller groups, they can be casting out demons. They can, they can, they, they can pray for the sick. You know, that is, that is our youngest being like a David. And somebody may, may think that, ah, me, I don't, know, I don't know, you know, much of Bible. No, just go out on evangelism, door to door, pair up with somebody and hear how, I mean, I've learned so much by going on evangelism I, I just pair up with my husband because it's a, it's a natural pair and I see how he tackles I mean, issues 
and I learned from it. So I'm emboldened next time. You know, when somebody wants to just rattle me, I, I, uh, this was how he did it. You know? So we're all growing and we're all exercising in smaller groups. This, of course, also leads to development and growth. And growth. So we are growing. Zechariah 4.10 for who has despised the day of small things? Who has despised the days of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. The emphasis there is the day of small things. There will be days of little beginnings. There will be days of little beginnings. Nobody begins from, from up there. We all begin from down the ladder. Somebody said that those who, those, who, those, who, those whose uh, assignment usually, usually begins from up there are grave diggers and they are dealing with death. When, when, when you are dealing with life, you start little by little, little by little. And we are all strengthened. We are all, um, we are all you know, made, we are all getting stronger. We are developing. And we are growing in the faith. For example, in operation of spiritual gifts, ministry gifts, you know, we're all growing. We're all growing. So the more we join smaller groups, the more we're able to exercise ourselves. I don't know how many of us were here last Tuesday when God's, the daughter was, was ministering. And she was, she, was, she was just saying from here that it has never happened to her before to feel heat in her ear. She felt heat in her, in her ear as she was ministering. So by that she understood that God will God wants to heal somebody who has there's it is not magic. It is as we grow with God, as we grow with God, as we grow with God. And it comes, it's it's made faster still in smaller groups. D, the benefit of smaller groups, company, company. You, you will not feel isolated when in need because you are a smaller group. People can easily see, feel, and meet your needs. We all need one another. All of us, we need one another, I tell you. Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We don't pray for times of weeping, but it's, it's inevitable. As long as we're we in this life. We all want times of rejoicing. Thank God for that. But we will always will need one another. This is practical Christianity. It's practical Christianity. Also, you sometimes need quick counsel. Prayer or help. John 11.32b then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Talking about Lazarus, the, the, the brother to Mary who died in John uh, 11. And Mary was saying, ah, if you had been here. So there's, there's what your, thank God that Jesus Christ raised him from the dead. But there's, there's something that would, that would not have happened if you had been here that is the value of smaller groups company company so we see where we have we have so much to gain when we belong to smaller groups well i'm th i think most of us who are here for midweek service i like to be in smaller groups so maybe i'm talking to the wrong people you know those who are uh, not here right now for no good reason are not likely to be in smaller groups but for us who have come this far we should be in smaller groups and be active there and just doing our our own bit there because there is no i've realized that in god's kingdom there is no menial assignment there is nothing that, that is menial in god's kingdom Jesus Christ told the parable of those who came in to work at different hours and he paid the, and that, that the, 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 the man who was recruiting them represented God 
and at the end he paid them as he saw fit and it was as though you should have, you should have paid others more no but he, that was what so there was, there's no menial assignment in god's kingdom so some he gave the, the, look at the parable of of the talents he gave one one he gave two he gave five he, the same blessing that he pronounced on the on the person that doubled his five he gave on the person that doubled his own one his own two it was the man that kept his own that he said wicked he called him wicked the first time i, I would read that honestly i thought ah, it's not too strong a word to use wicked because somebody did not use what well, actually the person did not the person gave it back to you now in that so why why say wicked you know i felt ah that's too much that's too strong well that was how much i understood it then well i i didn't stop reading the bible because of that so i went ahead but over the years i now understand why it is wickedness because we have only one life to live we have only one life to live and we are the only ones who can be that person so you the way you will you will do, do your own thing nobody else can do it that way and god has given us that gift of just that, that life so if we don't really use that life to do it in our own unique way in that group in that activity then uh, uh it's is is some amount of wickedness to the person that gave us that opportunity gave us that life and that benefit is brotherliness brotherliness how many of us in church can say that we have had relationships that have been birthed in church that have become so strong even you can compare it to a blood relationship my hand is up i didn't want to be, go too far by saying you can you can even rate it more than but it is as strong as that and it all started in church while serving god together brotherliness hebrews 13 1 let brotherly love continue brotherly love continue john 13 35 for this by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another if you have love for one another strife is nipped in the board as it is easier to notice strife is nipped in the board as it is easier to notice james 3 16 but where envy and self-seeking exists confusion and every evil thing are there where there's envy where there's self-seeking every evil thing is there but in these smaller groups we are able to nip strife at the board easily because it you can you will notice when things are not going going right because there should be brotherliness at those smaller smaller uh, 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 groups you know my 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 mom you know she, she never seems she never, she, she never used to stop talking about the fact that you know that she's so blessed when she comes to see us in, in ibadan and what what blesses, blesses my mom just the fact that we go for programs we come back with food and we eat the food so, ah, ah. just bring food home you are just eating it ah. Ah. So, ah. my child ah. people's heart is very open oh your heart is very open oh you say no, no no people they are good people it's true chop the food chop her. they are good i've seen them they are good people good people their hearts open you know just, ah, you know what we just just see as is it like that you know people, people, people who are elderly people they've seen life they've seen things hey, just go and bring food home just bring the chopper hey? <laughs> you know and she sees us say people just people are just eating people are just ah ah you know because in the world huh you don't, you don't know who is doing you <laughs> you don't know who is doing you eh your child will just just come and be playing look anti-moji 
Auntie Moji is here. She buys biscuits for many of the grand. Of, she has many grandchildren in church here, whom she buys biscuits for. And they, oh, Auntie Moj, Auntie Grandma, Grandma, my biscuit, Grandma. My. It doesn't happen like that. And just, eh? They will have poured the biscuit into the toilet. When they make eye to the child like this, the child understands. And the child, why, why are you pouring the biscuit? You know, and you see, and you see, these children, they are watching. They don't, they get confused. You know, I, 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 know, some, I know somebody whose child wasn't, wasn't, doing, wasn't coming to church. Was just being very, very stubborn. And when we had to get involved in, in the matter, because like, well, why, why won't you come to church? What's your problem? You know, younger people, they, they would just say it. They say, oh, it's hypocrisy. What's the hypocrisy about, about it? He say, my, my mom, when she sees anybody in church, ah, Auntie Bridget, no, no, I love you. As she's living, as she's living Pastor Bridget now, I say, ah, eh, hey, Kule, come, take. Meet pie. And just wink at Kunle. Kunle is wondering, but she just said, Pastor Bridget, I love you. Why is she winking at, at, at me now? And then when she enters the car, give me that meat pie. Chop, chop. You go chop winch one day and put it inside it. You know, so the but that gets confused. Say, ah, winch? Who is, who is a witch? Pastor Bridget? She gave me meat pie. Ah, ah. It's not, you just called her your, your my, 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 my pastor. I love my pastor. Chad is confused. And saying hypocrisy and doesn't want to come to church. See, they're, they're watching. But when they see true love, they see brotherliness. They see that, I mean, they, they see how true we are with, with, with one, one, one another. They have confidence in church, they have confidence in God, and they, they, and they, want, and they want to serve God. And this brotherliness should continue. Can we say amen? Doubts are cleared up. Doubts are cleared up more cleared up more easily, and further explanation or clarification made possible in these smaller groups, both of brotherliness. In Matthew 13, 36, the disciples went to Jesus Christ and they were asking him a question when he uh, he, he he spoke ab ab about the parable and he explained to them. He explained to them. Very easily we can walk up to, to pastor and ask a question or whatever we don't understand. You know, I know there was a time when we used to have that kind of, of service in which we ask, people ask questions. But even apart from, from that kind of a service, we know in Vine Branch we have, we have access to all our pastors, to all our ministers, to ask whatever we want to ask them in smaller groups. It works so well. And lastly, smoothness, smoothness. There is less stress. On the leadership there's less stress on the leadership in these smaller groups in Exodus 18 let's read verses 13 and 14 there and so it was on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people and the people stood before Moses from morning until evening so when Moses's father-in-law saw all that he did for the people he said what is this thing that you are doing for the people why do you alone sit and all the people stand before you from morning until evening? I mean, it, this was stressful. And Jethro took notice of it. I was able to give an advice to the man of God that he should break into smaller groups. Let's look at Exodus, the same 18. Let us go to verse 23 now. If you do this thing and God so commands you, then you'll be able to endure and all these people will also go to their places in peace. So Moses heeded the voice of his father-in-law and did that he had, did all that he had said. And what did Moses do? He chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens, smaller groups. So they judged the people at all the time. They had cases they brought to Moses, but they judged every small case themselves. So also every member gradually and practically undergoes leadership training informally in these smaller groups. 
2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So that is how it goes. That's how it goes. So in smaller groups, we are, we are learning and then you, you can impact others and it goes on and on. So, we, so every member gradually and practically undergoes leadership training informally and gets anointed while at it. So while at it, we are getting anointed while, while at it. In Numbers 11, I think that was where Moses was complaining. He was stressed up. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you afflicted your servant? <laughs> why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden of all these people upon me? Did I conceive all of these people? Did I beget them? He was just complaining here. He was stressed. He was burnt out. Because he was doing things wrongly. Thank God for Jethro who saved his life. By bringing godly counsel of smaller groups. So we are saying that when it is done properly. We all will get anointed in the process. There is, we won't be under undue stress. Undue stress. And burn out. But we all can exercise ourselves and do our own part. You know, another thing that, that, that my mom loves about Vine Branch <laughs> is that she says, when we get home, we are able to rest. She, she just, she has fought a few of, of my relations who, whom she has noticed that they, they were not resting. She says they should come to, come, they should come to Ibado. That Bridget and Shola, they sleep, they rest. When they get home, people don't come and knock on their door and be knocking and knocking. And gather there, you know, because there's no way you can one can have rest like that. And that was what was going in the life of Moses. He was overburdened, overburdened. So that's why I I I don't know how people of how people manage, you know, who on I mean to preach on radio is is, is, is enough burden. Now to now. Give your number and say if you if you say call this number oh nine something pastor someone will be waiting for you what how 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 are you going to do it ha this body carries the spirit and if the body is is, is overstretched <clears throat> so in second kings two one to fifteen a double portion of anointing came on Elisha. That is how God wants us to have a double portion of, of, of the anointing. And it comes when there's smoothness, where we're able to flow, where there's, where we're not under any undue stress. What we have called smoothness in smaller groups. These smaller groups are so beneficial as long as they are responsible to the main body. That is very important. You see, that is all in capital letters. They are responsible to the main body. Otherwise, it will become a clique. Just like cancer. Cancer is part of the body, but it is not also part of the body. It, it's a disease condition. It, it is tormenting the main body. Because it has its own agenda, which is different from the agenda of the body. Right now, we are, we are dealing with churches. Somebody just says, well, in my, own, in my own small group, I think we should, we should handle giving. That one, has not bec that one is not smaller. That one is not what you're what, what we talking about. That one is a, a complete, you know, uh, 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 focus. But these smaller groups, we work together. We are facing the same direction. We are working together. And we are all growing. We are all growing. Honestly, how many of us can testify that we have... In known increase by working in smaller groups. Just, just, just look around and see. So many hands are up. So we all should get involved. Uh, coming this far to be part of this meeting today, let us go all the way and be a part of smaller groups in church. Thank God that COVID 
uh, has been lifted now. I mean, measures in our midst so we can come together. Let us get active for God. Let us, let, us, let us use the life that we have now that we have this life and use it to bring glory to God in smaller groups. Let's give God thanks.